Hi, my name is Bradley Jursak, and I want to spend a few minutes talking to you about my new book, Out of the Embers, Faith After the Great Deconstruction. Deconstruction has been a very popular, even too trendy word these days in some circles, but it describes a whole range of experiences from exodus and liberation from old, narrow, toxic ways of seeing God, to something more akin to trauma and meltdown that leads us into alienation. So for one person, we might celebrate deconstruction as a beautiful, enlightening thing. And for the next, we need to come along and show some empathy and pick people up where they've been feeling excluded, where they feel confused, where they're so disoriented and alienated that they're wondering what's happening. We might call this um, a meltdown, and that was part of my experience. I did know the wonders of a theological deconstruction where God became so much more beautiful than I had ever imagined, that his love is infinite and it was touching me directly. And yet I've also known that involuntary kind of struggle where I experienced harm and caused harm through my deconstruction. And in those cases, uh, what doesn't help is a toxic positivity that says, just do whatever you want, follow your heart, this will end up well. Well, sometimes the steamroller of life just comes over our faith and what we need is an arm around us, not a cheerleader uh, that's trying to tell us that what is not okay is actually just fine. So I don't know what your experience of deconstruction is. Maybe it's as complex as mine. But I hope that this book will uh, open your eyes to some of the ways it could be for us. And to do that, I go into the second section of my book. I call it The Seven Sleepers. And these are experts from the history of deconstruction who are not just hand-wringing pastors trying to herd you back into the doors of the church, um, nor are they these toxic cheerleaders who think it's all good when it's not. No, these folks double down on deconstruction and they say it has to go all the way down to death and resurrection. That some embers could appear in the ashes of our deconstruction and bring us back to faith. But an authentic faith, not a thin faith, not a plastic faith, but something that is true to you and much deeper and richer than we had asked or imagined. In the last part of the book, I ask that question of those who are on the margins, people like the great martyrs of history who had something they were willing to die for, to the black voices who experienced suffering with Christ outside of the camp as he did on the cross, uh, to my godfather, a Gandalf-like figure who talks with me weekly about the kingdom of God as presence in communion, and the ways that we can experience the journey from alienation and isolation back into community where we're not just susceptible to the next round of spiritual abuse, but we actually connect with those like in 12-step recovery, for example, who have found a power greater than themselves who can restore them. And that kind of healing journey interests me a lot. And I I hope it will help us all see that deconstruction was never the end game. It's a birth canal to new life and to a new way of being. Uh, so join me as I walk that journey, as I reminisce, as I explore, as I provoke, and we'll see if we have a gift in that journey for you as well.